what one of the things, and I guess it's probably going to be in everyone's mind right now because it just came up on Wednesday, is the uh, explosive barbed wire match with Kenny Omega. And what you know, it's like, what do you what, what do you know? Like how that was that Tony's idea? Was it your idea? Was it Omega's idea? Like what kind of led to you know? I mean, I think we all knew you were going to wrestle Omega at this pay per view, and perhaps there'd be a stipulation, but that stipulation was a surprise i think because just something that's rarely been done in the u.s you know it's associated with japan i mean was it something like did you were you fascinated by it like seeing it when you know seeing those explosive barbed wire matches or was how did this sort of come about um i've well i I don't i got a lot of uh you know i have things i want to say about it and things i'll my thoughts on this match and so forth that I will be saying on Dynamite and so forth going forward. So I don't want to uh, put the cart before the horse and spoil anything or anything like that as far as, you know, how uh, I'm feeling going into this. But uh, I'll say that uh, I would have never thought in a million years. And obviously, you know, I love uh, – obviously, I'm a deathmatch connoisseur, you know. I love uh, watching some stuff that would make people uh, – completely uncomfortable and gross them out, you know? And, uh, to me, it's almost a different sport. It's like a different, completely different psychology and a different, uh, different way of doing stuff. Uh, but so I was was a fan of, have seen these exploding death matches, you know, with the Onita and Terry Funk and all these, you know, I've seen them over the years, never would have expected in a million years that I would do one at AEW. Two years ago, when I first talked to them, I would have never been like, hey, I want to come sign with you. Can I start doing exploding barbed wire death matches? I would have never in a million years expected that I would have that opportunity. So when this was uh, brought to me quite some time ago, actually, I'm not going to turn that down. Hell yeah. Like, really? Are you serious? We can do that? Like, for real? <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, you know, so uh, I think yeah. So so, so it was so it was actually brought to you as opposed to you going. Please, can I do it? Yeah, it was brought to me. Yeah, but like, I'm like a kid in a candy store. I'm like, are you serious? Jesus! All right, <laughs> you know. And uh, cool thing about you know like AEW and Tony is like when they put me in these situations, you know, early on, I have like a certain standard I had to live up to, and. uh, one thing I absolutely, absolutely cannot stand is the thought of promising something and not delivering it to fans. So if I tell you, like, this is uh, some wild stuff's going to go down, like, I'm going to deliver on it. And I feel like there's many, many times over the years uh, where I'd say these things, like, I'm going to put you through hell in a cell and whatever the fuck they had me say. But in my mind, I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm not going to do any of this stuff. This is all, I'm just... This is stupid. Like, there's not even going to be any. We know exactly what's going to happen. It's the same stupid hell in a cell match we always. You know, it's like, yeah, I felt like I was always over promising what I could, what I was uh, allowed to actually deliver. And I pitched so much stuff over the years, or I'd be like, trust me, like everything from like, I mean, everything imaginable, I have pitched. And it just ne- never got anything through. It was always this like same old, same old run of the mill stuff you always see. You know, I always try to pitch like wacky, creative, like violent things, and it's always like can't do that, can't do that. Even though I'm like, it's not that bad. Trust me, you know, it's gonna be cool. You know, uh, like something simple, like tearing the uh, tearing the canvas off and exposing the boards. You know, something like that. I pitched that for a Hell in a Cell match. I'm in there with like Hunter and Vince and Seth. And I'm really into it, you know, and I'm explaining it to them. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to take a fucking box cutter and I'm going to rip that canvas off and then I expose the wood. And they look at me like I'm fucking stupid. Like they didn't get it at all. Vince's like, I don't think people are going to understand it. I'm like, dude, trust me. Then they, it, then, then they did it in NXT. <laughs> yeah, I was like, yeah, they looked at me like I was an idiot. They're like, like Hunter's rolling his eyes. Vince is confused. I'm like, first time I seen it was a guy named Masada. I saw him do it in Germany. I was like, that was the coolest thing I've ever seen. And uh, I was like, it always works. Trust me, people are going to go nuts. Like, it's going to be great. 
it's like it's different. We haven't never nobody's ever done that in the hell itself. But of course, no. No, no, no. And every other idea like that, like no, 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 no. But like you you like like Hunter liked fucking thumbtacks when it was when Cactus was making him look good and putting him over. He loved thumbtacks back then, but whatever, dude. Anyway. Uh so stuff like that, I'd be like, man, like let's take it to the next level. Let's get creative. Let's do something wild, you know. So and then, so now I've made it very clear to like Tony and that like don't put me in these situations unless you want me to go full on full tilt. If you don't, because don't be careful what you wish for, because I'm not in the business of under delivering my promises to people these days, you know. So, uh, and they know that. So, in a situation like this, it's like, like the gloves are off, and like any potential uh, thing I could think of is a possibility, and any potential thing Kenny and his creative uh, mind can think of. And I think me and him have the similarity of like. Uh, this our kind of compulsion to take things to as uh, high level as as possible, and I've seen it, you know, working with uh, Kenny the times that we've uh, had matches. You know, I've seen the drive in Kenny to like take take the performance and the art as far as possible, and really put his body on the line and take it to that umpteenth degree, and. Uh, so you get with the with our uh that's kind of where we're very very similar in, in the way we think and with our two creative brains and our drive to uh to create something special i uh pretty uh you know this could be this could be a real wild night in jacksonville I, i'll tell you that so uh and I'm, I'm fully 110 percent now mentally invested in in this so it's pretty cool and i don't know like at the end of this you know we'll see where this ranks on the list of uh all the former exploding matches that we have to try to live up to now, I, think we're gonna, I think we're gonna do pretty good <laughs> hey if you're a big fan of wrestling observer radio we got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.